Oi, today we're doing leak code number 334, increasing triplet sub sequence. So this is a live attempt, meaning I don't know how to do it yet. And if I can't figure it out, we I guess we'll have to go read through the solutions, right? The timer is in the top center. And uh, yeah, I guess let's get going. Given an integer array nums, return true if there exists a triple of indices i, j, k such that i less than j less than k and nums i less than nums j less than nums k. If no such indices exist, return false. Interesting. How would we go about doing this? I guess with pointers, right? I feel like we have to, I mean, we could just sort the thing. The, the simple answer is, is to sort it and then check. And it's less than, not less than equal to, right? So even if we sort it, we still have to do some checks. Um, I'm thinking I am gonna go for the naive solution of just sorting it first. Um, and then after I've sorted it, I think it makes sense because the built-in sort function should just be O and log n, right? After I've sorted it, then it's pretty easy to just, uh, check for not equal values, right? Um, let's go ahead and see. If that doesn't work, I suppose we will get messed up by the runtime limit exceeded or something. Actually, let's make sure we check the, um. well, no, because don't we lose the indices when we sort? Oh, we can't sort. Oh no. Okay. Yikes. All right. Um, one less equal to nums length, less equal to five to the 10th to the fifth. And nums have a wide range. Okay. O n time complexity and O one space complexity is preferable. That tells me we're using pointers, is what it sounds like, right? Um, so i comma j comma k equals uh just i equals j equals k equals zero, and then so this is weird. Instead of a left right pointer, we actually have three like total, right? Um, and I guess what we can do is we can just iterate j like move it towards the right. And then if we get to the end of the list without finding anything bigger than our initial value, oh, every, every time we find something lower than our initial value, we should move i and j to the left, right? And then eventually, hopefully, j finds something bigger. If not, move i and j, sorry, k finds something bigger. I meant, I meant k, moving k to the right first. If k gets all the way to the far right and doesn't find anything bigger, then we reset all of them to plus one, to so moving i and j to the one to the right and then k. And then uh, if k does find something bigger, then we start iterating j if it, well, no, I, supp I suppose we start because that, that wouldn't make any sense. So we have to go past, past k to move j past k and see if we can figure that out, right? Okay. This is kind of a weird one. I see why it's a medium now. At first, it sounded pretty easy, but I'm kind of getting the, the issue here, right? Um, while just easy one, I less than let's do n equals length of nums, right? While I less than n and j less than n and k less than n. And what other conditions are we going to have? We're going to have to add more in here, I think. Um, we're also going to have to do a, we don't want them to be greater. Um, well, no, that is already done by, I actually just did that. Never mind. So all of them are that way. And then, uh, we are going to, I suppose, check, uh, let's start off with iteration, I guess, actually. No, no, no. Always end with iteration. Um, yeah, I'll always end with iteration. So if nums K, I'm gonna move K out first nums k is greater than nums we're gonna keep i on the far left right if nums k greater than nums i and wait if nums k greater than nums j and nums j greater than nums i then return true right in that case yeah yeah if if j greater than j greater than or sorry k greater than j and j greater than i and i'm gonna make this more readable given our tiny tiny space um i think that's a bit more readable let's just full on we're taking this over right um 
if those things are all true, we have to return true, obviously. Um, and then L if L if K greater than J and nums K greater than nums J, right? Um, so meaning this is probably and I equals to J, right? And let me just go first. And yep, K greater than J, J and nums K greater than nums J. Then we have to say J equals K, K plus equal to one, right? Because we are now moving J, our midpointer over towards the right. And then L if, um, L if, what's our condition for, I don't like heavy conditionals. They make my brain all like left, right gets mixed up. I can't even do left, right in real life. Like plus minus one gets confused in my head. Zero indexing. What's happening here? We've already checked for the winning case. And then we've checked for the switch values and of J and K and K starts incrementing again case. And now we check for the, I think we're only going to use um, K really. Elif. I is not equal to J and K greater than J. I think that's probably redundant, the whole K greater than J thing. Um, and nums K is less than nums J, right? So if, if we find that K actually goes down a value, it makes sense at that point. Um, no, this is just if I... Equal, let's just do for i equals j and k greater than j i equals j k is greater than j nums k is less than nums i then we say i equals j equals k k plus equal to one that's a pretty these are pretty similar right here i guess i could have nested that but whatever um well if i probably should nest these is my my guess um, yeah, that might make sense, but I really don't want, oh my God, what's a nested version? If K greater than J and J greater than I, L if I equals J and K greater than J, L if I equals J and K less than J, L if I is not equal to J and K greater than J, L if I is not equal to j and k less than j. And I don't care about else because it'd be gross. Um, right, if we grab this, if true, i equals j and k greater than j. If this, tab right, and similarly, if this, i equals j, k greater than j. This is so ugly. I don't like this at all. Is there a better way to do this? I really would love to think there might be. Um, I equals J and K less than J. Oh, actually, this is right here, isn't it? Oh, my God. So ugly, right? So K greater than J, J greater than I. If this, fantastic, right? Otherwise, um, I'm going to assume... If J is greater than I, that means that assuming J greater than I means nums J nums I. No, I shouldn't assume that. Can I, can I assume? If so, then we're just going to K plus equals to one, right? Um, and then else I equals J, K greater than J. This is so ugly. I don't like this. Is there a better way to do this? I don't think so, right? You have to keep track of all three of these things. They're different indices. Um, and the thing it asked for in the ideal scenario was ON, right? ON time complexity, ON space complexity. Yeah, that's what I've got. It's just a nightmare of if else statements is the problem that's messing with my mind right now that I don't like to do. Is there some kind of like subtraction addition version of this, like a mess with values? Would it be easier to do a cumulative sum? Three is greater than two. No, no, cumulative sum wouldn't work. Neither would. I don't think. I don't think that a plus minus so minus one plus four minus five plus four plus six. Well, that might work. Plus one the whole route. Plus four plus six. Would that work? 
plus four plus five plus four plus two. Two positives in a row would be good, but also you can have a negatives in there is the problem. Um, would accumulate some of that. So like zero minus one three minus two uh two four. I still don't know how to how to index that so that it works. We're gonna go back to my my main thing. Okay. Oh, this is such a nightmare. I don't like this. J equals K. K plus equal to one. If I equals J, I'm gonna have to triple layer this, I think, because this is still looking ugly to me, right? If J greater than I, if J is less than I, if J equal to I, right? This is so ugly. I, I don't like the solution in the slightest. I, I'm so not fond. I equals J, if, right? Right. This is so gross. So gross. Oh my god, this is so gross. I'm I'm not fond of any of this at all. Um I, I just the, asking me to do endless conditionals is asking me to take forever. Like I, I can't stand like greater than less than in my head just doesn't make any sense. This is so frustrating. Like it's not a hard problem, but it's and I bet there's a better I bet there's a very simple conditional that you actually need. Like your actual only cases that are interesting is the problem. And I and I'm just overcomplicated with every possible case. I know that's happening. It's just a different thing to actually implement it, right? Um, if k greater than j, right? I j k greater than j, j is greater than i, um, then they're all better. Like great, else uh like a plus equal one until they're all better. Um if j is k greater than j right how is j gonna be less than i i'm oh, sorry j is not gonna be less than i ever i'm not planning on that j equals i is an actual thing right um j equals i right if nums k um nums k what's to nums j um nums k greater than nums if nums k is greater than nums j right then we are setting j equal to k equal to k k plus equal to one right and then if nums k is less than nums j right then j i equals j equals k k plus equal to one um this k plus equal to one so far anyways happens at at the end, who cares? So we can honestly write k plus equal to one. Um, if k is not greater than j, rather k equals i equals j. K equals i equal equals k. That's just implied. Um, if k is greater than j and i equal j equal to other, you would assume k is also equal to them. Um, so that doesn't even make any sense to have. Doesn't even make any sense to have k greater than j at that point, right? If i equals j, that implies that equals k, so I don't care, right? That's just a k plus equal one, right? The the, the only scenario here, I think, is j plus, is k plus equal to one, because if they're all equal to each other, k plus equal to one, okay, that's a whole lot simpler. Um, If j greater than i, then we check for this whole thing, return true, um, but if just one of them happens, if what if nums k greater than nums j and nums j is not greater than nums i? If nums k greater than nums j, if nums k greater than j is i, if j is this is works, but this doesn't work, all we want to do is iterate k, right? So we can go ahead and remove this. But if this is true and this is not true, if j is equal, less than or equal, sorry, if, if nums i is less than or equal to nums j, then we want to, if nums j is less than or equal to nums i, equal doesn't matter, but if nums i is somehow less than nums j, or nums j somehow less than nums i then we want then we want to say i equals j right so if j greater than i whereas if k is greater than j and j equals i right 
this is not going to work and i'm so far past the time limit this is so it's a bad is this a medium question please say it is yes thank god all right we're not past time limit if i equals j right if i so while i less than n and j less than n and k less than n move this it's a typo and then return true right where do we do the reset part if k greater than j um if k equals n minus one k equals j we're just going to reset it to j right um does that make sense i'm not quite sure and if j i don't know if that makes sense this is such a nightmare i don't like any of this there must be a better way there must be like a much simpler conditional setup k greater than j j equals i right nums k greater than nums j j equals k right and then if nums k is less than nums j so it doesn't make any sense for that to be the case because we only do this when greater so i don't think i actually have to worry about this case of nums j less than nums i that shouldn't be a thing because we're only setting this when that happens right if uh so i equals j uh, this doesn't make any sense to me yet um there's something there though the, what where the heck is the reset happen is my problem um if nums k is greater than j j is greater than I, or j equals i nums k less than nums j then we set them equal to each other and we do our k plus equal to one that's fine k greater than j j equals i and nums k greater than nums j then j should be set equal to k and then we iterate k um right um if what's our what's our reset if k equals n minus one if we've gotten there there's no point in iterating k again what we want to do instead is we want to say i equals j right we're moving i up to j and we are what else are we doing we're basically starting from there right k equals j right that's about all i can think to do i'm i'm my brain's dying on this i do not like this one bit uh it's just an ugly the way i'm solving anyway is return j prime k is that how you what are we returning actually if we get all the way to the end here then we're returning false false no chance this works i wish languages were less sensitive to syntax huh all right maybe i was doing okay and just really getting way too overloaded with the conditionals and confusing myself let's try it my guess is test cases are going to be bad. Oh, we're stuck in a while loop. We are definitely stuck in a while loop. Yeah, yeah. If k equals n minus 1. Yeah, we definitely got stuck in the while loop. So what happened here is all at 0, right? These are all fine. None of this ever... Oh, yeah, it did. k greater than j. Um, well, in the first round, anyways, they're all equal to 0. This doesn't trigger. We're just going to iterate k one time. Now k is 1, the other two are 0, k is greater than j, j is equal to i, nums k is 1, nums j is 1, we don't do anything, Num also don't do anything, oops, um, right, and then nope, and then k plus equal to 1, yeah, um, if k equals n minus, um, and then just plus, now we're at 3, the same thing happens over and over again, k gets all the way to the end, like and then what happens when k is equal to m minus one uh what do we do so this was the problem is we were setting things equal to j and they just always stayed at zero what we actually need to do here is iterate um iterate through oh this is so ugly iterate j um let's separate this into if i equals j if j greater than i right those two cases if i equals j i plus equal to one j plus equal to one right k equals j k equals j equals i if j is greater than one here what we have to do is we have to set i equal to j and there's a moving i up to j and we're moving k back k equals to j right that's what happened right here um that's fine by me. Let's try that now. Use test case run. All right, there's gonna be more more issues though. We're only through like the seventh of like fifty something tests. There's definitely more issues. 
Okay, we got near the end of the test cases. Use test case um, 013. Do we ever iterate J anywhere? No, we just iterate through equaling things, right? That's fine. Um, yikes, yikes, yikes. Okay, so print I, J, K, J, nums, I, nums, J, nums, K. And then are we already using this test case? What's happening here? Yep, we are. Okay. And then one, zero, zero, one, 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 five, zero, one, two, one, five, oh, zero, one, three, one, five, four, zero, one, four, one, five, one, zero, one, five, one, five, three, one, one, two, five, five, oh, right. One, one, two, five, five, oh. But that never attempted. So j is greater, k is greater than j, and i equal to j, j right? k is greater than j, i, j is equal to i, nums k was less than nums j. Set them all, nums k. I should just iterate here, I think, right? Right? 112550, 113554, 114. Five five one 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 five 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 three two two three is oh oh four two oh oh four k is greater than j j is equal to i right k is greater than j j is equal to i nums k is greater than nums j yep so we set j zero four and then one two three five zero three four three Three, 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 four, 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 one. This is so inefficient. This is n squared, I think, effectively. Uh, three, three, five, four, four, three, four, three, four, four, five, one, one, three. Okay, this is not good. Um, there should have been a point here where we set j equal to k and left i where it was, right? Which was it would have been at the zeros, right? zero two three this part right here it should have iterated k right here where i and j equal each other and k is greater and nums k is greater i and j equal each other k is greater i and j equal each other nums k greater than nums j j should have moved to k it did three right zero four one Okay, well, that worked fine, but we need to get back. Oh no, we need to. Oh no, four, one, four, three. So, those if j is greater than i, but k is less, this, this, j is greater than i, but k is less than j. If nums k is less than nums j. Then what do we do here? Nums k less than nums j. Less than equal to nums j. And k equals n minus 1. Then we say j plus equal to 1. k equals j plus 1. How about that? Okay, there's more test cases to be wrong. I should probably look at the answer by now. But I just, there's definitely a better way to do it in these conditionals. All right, we're giving up. I, I can't go through a nightmare of conditionals all day. I want to find what the actual correct good solution by somebody else that didn't have to go through this nightmare of conditionals is. Plan here is to iterate through nums and place each element in the least position, first through third, for which it qualifies. Oh my god, should it qualify? If we find a third, we succeed true, otherwise... We fail, false. Oh, that's so much better. Oh, are you just doing like a, a Q or something? What is that? First, second, four, third, and nums. If second, less than third. Okay. Four, third. Wait, wait. So this is just, I guess, your right pointer or whatever, and it just iterates through all of them. These things start off as inf. That's odd. If second is less than third, that can't start from the beginning, obviously, because that's an inf, and you would return true, but that's not going to happen yet. If third less than or equal to, let's copy this over so we can mess with it, right? And then for an example test case of one, two, three, four, five, these start off at inf. 
third it starts off at the zero index the value is one this is not going to run third is one less than or equal to first nope that's inf else second equals third yep now we have second is one and then two second is less than third what there's no way what did i mess up here in this case second would already be less than third that doesn't make any sense um let's so first equals inf um list input right first starts off at inf second inf and right input one first and second inf third one right and second is not less than third third is not less than or equal to first second is equal to third so we're gonna set that equal to one right and now input two third is now equal to two second is one is less than third that that doesn't make any sense this isn't this doesn't work there's no way oh, this is so frustrating i hate programming i literally just ran that simulated second is now one third well one comma two comma one that shouldn't work right there how does that and yet it what is it doing did i simulate this wrong what's what's happening here in right input one okay first and second get sent to infinity second less than third third is now equal to, to one right no second is not less than third third less than or oh oh i missed this line entirely a third less than or equal to first um first equals third uh i see there it is now we move on two two and then and then two second is still infinity so this can't be true third is not this this can't be true second equal to third two right moving on three three if second is less than third it is return true okay i'm convinced now never mind all right that was very annoying but yeah all right frustrating and embarrassing right there i knew there was a simpler way to do it i just wasn't thinking about it correctly i was trying to as a policy a thing i need to learn is that rather than so i've been learning that you can't be brute forcing things obviously you need to rather than try and implement a brute force approach it's going to be ugly in code and slow in time you need to just go for a clever solution i have not been i did not generalize that to excessive if statements are never a good idea that's a thing i need to learn is excessive if statements are never a good idea there is always a better way to do some excessive like combination of if statements and i need to be focusing more time on finding that as opposed to trying to get said if statements to work because i think i could have gotten those if statements to work but it would have just it was just you saw an ugly mess so yeah whatever all right that's it like subscribe i guess or whatever end of video don't leave yet if you got this far you're gonna love this video or this playlist don't forget to like subscribe comment hit the bell all the youtube things join the discord server follow on twitter connect on linkedin and consider supporting me monthly either through patreon or by hitting that youtube join button down below for as low as one dollar per month you can get early access to my videos or if you're a one-time payment kind of person hit up my venmo and if you want to borrow my brain for a bit consider booking a paid consultation video call all of those links are over in my link tree and uh yeah end of video